This is a summer breeze. I'm really, really grateful to get this in here. <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Date and I'm your humble narrator and welcome back to another bundle banter. Yes, indeed. Humble Bundle is back again with the Humble Choice November 2020 Bundle. I skipped out on October. Uh, there wasn't too much in there that grabbed me anyways. I'll talk a little bit more about why, my computer problems and such at the end of the video if you are interested. But if you're only here for the games, then I don't blame you for that at all either. Even though uh, this video has been a little bit late getting out again due to said computer problems. But we are going to get back on the horse. I'm, I'm trying to keep this thing going. So first things first, let's take a look at the games that we have. There is Yakuza Kiwami 2, Darksiders 3, Imperator Rome, Crying Sons, Darksburg, Little Misfortune, Smile For Me, Dark Wood, Chuck, Rover Mechanic Simulator, Europa, and Townsman, A Kingdom Rebuilt. So overall, some very, very nice picks. Yakuza kind of blew my mind. That has been on my wish list for a very, very long time and officially completes my Yakuza collection, at least on Steam. <laughs> there are a lot of Yakuza games out there, but they're not all on Steam. Anyways, enough rambling. We'll take a look at each of these games individually and see what we got here. Yakuza Kiwami 2. Okay, so we have all probably heard the praises sung about Yakuza 0 when that came out. And then Yakuza Kiwami came to PC as well, and it was, well, I mean, pretty amazing compared to the average game. But it didn't quite stack up to the glory that was packed into every inch of Yakuza 0, at least in my opinion. Well, we are extremely blessed that Yakuza Kiwami 2 came to PC shortly after. And this game, yeah, wow, it's definitely on par with Zero. It might even be a bit better. I mean, all the insane mini-games and collectibles and street fight battles that we've come to love just kicked up a notch with Kiwami 2, and on top of that, it runs like a dream. The engine is basically like nothing else that I've ever experienced. Light is rendered almost too well. It looks super real. You can walk into buildings without having to suffer through a loading screen of any sort, which is just amazing, and the game doesn't even hiccup. I mean, to me, it feels like this is the next step in gaming, and I say that without even a hint of sarcasm. If you're looking for weighty combat and myriad minigames and endless subplots in the manliest soap opera ever made, well, Yakuza Kiwami 2 has it all. If you haven't tried it yet, you're basically obligated to pick up this bundle. This game is worth the price of the bundle all by itself to me. Darksiders 3. Okay, so... I'm going to rip into Darksiders 3 just a little bit. And don't get me wrong, it is a good game overall, but it just kind of feels like it sold out some of the unique identity that was built in Darksiders 1 and 2 in order to jump onto the Souls-like train that seemed to be conquering the gaming sphere in the few spots that failed to fall prey to Battle Royale mode. Attempting to collect your souls after a death was really fun and intriguing the very first time I experienced it, but it has since become frustrating, particularly in a game that relies so much on currency for preparation before heading into a big battle. Darksiders 1 and 2 were super good. Darksiders 3 does fall short by comparison, but that still doesn't make it overall bad. They tried something different, and it didn't work as well as it could have. Darksiders Genesis, the fourth installment, went back to the drawing board, so... They did know that they dropped the ball, and they came back with a very strong game as their apology. Even while being the weakest game in the Darksiders series, 3 isn't a complete abomination if you're looking to just beat up some dudes in action-packed gameplay. Overall, Darksiders 3 is more like a failed experiment, and sometimes we can learn a lot more from a failed test than we can from a wild success. Imperator Rome. Ah, Paradox Interactive. I always have some pretty good things to say about Paradox and their grand strategy titles. They can lean a bit heavy on the DLC, but this is the deluxe edition, so that's basically a non-issue. What is an issue is the lack of true vision that seems to plague Imperator Rome. It has Crusader King-style character interactions and threw in the region management from Europa Universalis 4, but the combat aspect still feels kind of lackluster. 
I mean, I guess you really couldn't pack in everything into this game, or else we'd end up with something that feels far too dense to ever be any fun. I do enjoy playing as the different nations, and they all have a slightly different feel, which is nice, but there are no culture-specific units, which is really what would pull the combat through for me. I do enjoy it more than Civilization, but it tries to do too many things at once and ends up feeling overwhelming to new players and sort of lackluster to veterans. While it isn't the worst grand strategy title I've ever seen, I do know that Paradox is capable of so much more. In the future, they'll probably need to narrow their focus a bit more in order to hit that target. Similar to Darksiders 3, this one kind of falls in the middle for me. It's not great, but it's not abysmal either. Speaking of great, Crying Sons. Mmm. I have played a lot of FTL, and adding an RTS strategy into the mix of FTL seems like it should be the next step in the evolution, and Crying Sons does fairly well at creating a fun and rewarding gameplay loop, but it bills itself as a roguelike, and therein lies the trouble. A story is nowhere near paramount for a roguelike, and it probably should have been done away with completely in order to streamline Crying Sons. Playing through the same chapters after a death, getting the same animations and dialogue, and basically just sitting there with your dick in your hand while you wait for another shot at whatever took you down the previous run. It just doesn't make for a good roguelike experience. If you're gonna bill your title as a roguelike, I expect to press R and jump back into the action instantly. Maybe distribute some stat points or something like that. If you're booting up Crying Sons, expecting a true-to-form roguelike, it is going to lead to abject disappointment. But, if you're looking for an RTS title with superb graphics, a decent story, and some fun gameplay, then you'll probably find what you're looking for. Not every game that makes you start over from the beginning can be classified as a roguelike. That would make almost every game that I played on Super Nintendo a roguelike, and that's just not the case. I think the marketing team would do well here to learn the difference and what people expect from the genre. Despite my bitching about genre classifications, this is a great RTS, just, just don't try to play it as a roguelike. Darksburg, another roguelike, this time mashed together with an action RPG, and it does work decently. Any complaints I had about Crying Sun and its execution are wiped away in one fell swoop with Darksburg. I mean, well, it does feel a little light on the content. Five levels and a boss are really all you get, but the character classes do feel super fun and unique, and you can even build them in a few different ways, so you'll probably get a few more runs before Darksburg has truly run its course. Like in any true-to-form roguelike, you collect a permanent currency during your runs that can be used to make future runs easier. It's not really enough to keep me stuck, like the original Diablo was able to do, but it serves as a nice carrot on a stick for those determined to milk this game for all it's worth. Multiplayer seems to work decently too. My main gripe, aside from the size of the game of course, is that you will undoubtedly run into some performance issues before long, which seems a shame. This title is a decent release, but I'm gonna say that it'll need a lot more polish before it can take its place among any of the other action RPG greats. Little Misfortune. <sighs> I'm not a fan of point and clicks. <laughs> if you haven't watched any of my other videos, you might not know. If you've watched even one of my other videos, then you definitely know. I am not a fan of point and clicks. Just gotta get that out of the way first. <sighs> Little Misfortune feels purposely random in its composition to the point that I'm not really sure that the developer had any idea what the final product was meant to be, or do, or say. It might be a little too deep for me to comprehend or something like that, but if that's the case, then the idea should have been delivered in a way that wasn't so ramshackle. I sat through Little Misfortune, pointing and clicking for two hours in search of some sort of point. This is not a game like Machinarium or Franbo where your brain is challenged with puzzles. You just walk left or right and select yes or no, and watch as your sanity slips a little further away from you. It might make a decent book or a movie, but when I sit down to play a game, I'm generally expecting to play, and Little Misfortune becomes a large misfortune, as it slowly dawned on me that this game was actively averse to presenting any challenge to the player at all. It's brain mush, there is no substance here. You might enjoy the quirky humor, but 
Beyond that, I'd be hard-pressed to point out anything else here that is worth experiencing. Of the three point-and-clicks in this bundle, this is definitively the worst of them, so at least there's that. Smile for me, another point-and-click, and this game is really everything that Little Misfortune tried to be but never became. The controls are actually somewhat innovative here. The art style is cute while also managing to be off-putting, which fits the vibe of this game completely. When compared to the saccharine sweetness of Little Misfortune, Smile for me has the formula nailed down infinitely better. Not only does the art style fit the mood better, but the game <gasps> actually manages to present some puzzles to solve. I don't think I could have dealt with two Netflix style games in the same bundle. As I say endlessly, I am not a huge fan of point and click titles, but compared to the previous entry, this game is like a breath of fresh air. The story is fantastic, has a point, and is clear in its intentions. The mix of animation and real life is fantastic, and I loved meeting new weird characters and gathering all the gossip that they had to spill. Overall, Smile for me is a point and click done right in my book. I had a great time with it, and I'd highly recommend it to anyone looking to meet some weirdos and then kiss said weirdos. <laughs> Taking a break from the point and clicks now, we've got Dark Wood. A top-down horror survival game with some crafting, well, that sounds right up my alley, sans the horror part. I've never really been into horror titles because they all consist of jump scares and frankly, my nerves are shot. Even watching scary movies with my wife, she leaps like four feet in the air and I just shrug and say, eh, saw it coming. <laughs> Darkwood doesn't bother with the jump scares too much, I mean there are a few, but more than that, the game manages to create an atmosphere. And that is so much more terrifying to me. Night is coming. If you don't make it to the safe house, then you won't live to see the morning. You'll need to experiment and learn and, yeah, die in order to succeed, but the process is just so much fun. Even the stilted combat and somewhat shallow survival crafting system isn't enough to keep me from diving back into Darkwood time and time again. The sound design is what I want to point out the most. It is perfection. Imagine hearing the tables and chairs that you barricaded the door with being slowly dragged away from said door. Oh, I can't think of any horror game in recent memory that managed to make me want to turn the lights back on while playing at 3am. While I'm not a huge proponent of horror games, this one definitely managed to pull me in decently. Our final point and click, Chiok. Yep, another point and click. Oh god, here we go. <laughs> Well, okay, on the plus side, it sits head and shoulders above Little Misfortune's nonsense, but it didn't manage to click with me like Smile For Me did. It feels a bit generic. You've got a princess, and you've got some goblins. The art style is admittedly very nice, but the story itself falls flat on its face, particularly the ending, which I won't spoil here. The characters are likable, but they don't get fully explored like I think they should have been in a point and click that relies so heavily on story elements to carry the player through. It feels a lot like Dragon's Lair on your PC, which on paper that sounds like a truly awesome thing, but let's be honest, we are decades beyond having a game carried largely through just the visuals. Overall the characters get a bit of personality showcased, but it left me wanting more. Okay, I understand that they are this way, but why are they this way? I will say, however, that I guess wanting more is much better than sitting and waiting for the experience to be over as soon as possible. I felt like this game came right down the middle of the road, which, given my disdain for most point-and-click games, has to at least be considered a partial win. I'd wager that there are a lot of people who will give this one a rave review. I'm just, uh, not one of those people. <laughs> Rover Mechanic Simulator. This is a pretty good simulation, but I don't know if that necessarily qualifies it as a good game. The gameplay loop is much more shallow than it should be, and it felt like I wrung everything that the game had to offer out of it in less than an hour, which is not ideal. I'm sure there are some folks who really get into this sort of thing, but when compared to PC Simulator, the troubleshooting here feels really stale. Right-click a part, get a condition percentage, decide if it needs replacing, wait around for a hundred seconds while the part that you want to replace is 3D printed. The devs did offer like a little snake mini game, which proves that they know you're going to be doing a lot of waiting around. 
which makes me wonder why they just didn't add a bit more depth to the game. Ah, mostly I think I get so uninvested because I don't know a damn thing about how rovers are put together, nor do I really care. What's an oscilloscope do? Why should I care? <laughs> There's just no variety in the assembly. You play a little mini game to screw things off and on, basically ad nauseum. And if you're looking to drive your rover around after it's assembled, well, you're out of luck on that front as well. While I'm sure there are space buffs out there that will get rather into how rovers are put together, it simply doesn't capture me in any significant way. Personally, I'd much rather play space engineers or planet explorers for my space fix of putting things together and then also being able to drive them around after they're put together. That, that's the biggest thing that's probably missing. Europa is my pick for my second favorite game in this bundle. I absolutely was flabbergasted by how much I loved it. It is a beautiful 3D physics-based puzzler mashed up with some Metroidvania platforming. Basically, you walk up some walls with your little sticky feet and you forget which way is up or down and you fall to your death and rinse and repeat. Europa is an unexpected treat from start to end. I did end up stuck a time or two, and this game does not show any mercy. You either figure out the puzzle in front of you, or you walk away and call it quits. The puzzles aren't as twistedly difficult as something like Black Hole, but there are a few times that you'll need to take a break and come back later to look at things with fresh eyes. This is not the sort of game that will hold your hand, and that's just the way I like things. It might turn some people off, but... Being left to your own devices to explore a world is always a joy. I don't speedrun generally or min-max or worry about anything really except for giving myself over to the experience that a game has to offer without the constant harassment of trying to accomplish some arbitrary task which seems to infest modern gaming. This is definitely a game that you should sit down with for a while and see if it clicks. It definitely did for me. The controls, the puzzle, the art style, they all assisted in that. It is definitely a great surprise title. Townsmen, a kingdom rebuilt. I love a good city builder. This is not a good city builder, but it's a passable one. You boot up the game and witness the majesty of half the buildings saying DLC required. Wow. Well, still we press on and encounter what is quite clearly a mobile port. The art style's nice, and the mechanics are fairly fleshed out, but it should still be glaringly obvious that this is undoubtedly a mobile port. I'm not even really going to say that all mobile ports are bad. This is actually one of the better ones, as a matter of fact. But when you consider what it's up against on the PC, I mean, why would you waste your time? Does this game even come close to holding a candle to RimWorld? They are billions, Frostpunk, Surviving Mars, Planet Base, Craft the World, Oxygen Not Included, and that's just off the top of my head. If I went digging, I'm sure I could come up with no less than a hundred games that put this title to shame. If I had this title on my phone, I'd be delighted to burn a few hours with it, why not? But when it stands among the impeccable titles in my Steam library, <laughs> I just can't bring myself to take it seriously, or god forbid even to buy the DLC. So what do I think of this bundle overall? I think compared to the showings that we've had for the past few months, this is a summer breeze. I'm really, <laughs> really grateful to get this in here. Um, obviously, Yakuza Kiwami 2, objectively the best thing in this bundle. I think everybody is going to like it. Even if you don't enjoy the combat or something like that, there's a mini game in there for everybody. You can run a hostess bar and make it into a business management simulator. It's, ah, uh, Yakuza is just so good. I will never 100% complete Yakuza, but I will not hesitate to play them. Europa was a surprise second pick for me. Uh, it kind of came out of left field. I'd never heard of it before, wasn't sure what to expect when I booted it up, but it turned out to be beautiful with some well-built puzzles, and I really liked that. Crying Sons, despite my ripping on the uh, roguelike tag that they used, overall it is a really, really good RTS title, so I place it into third place for this bundle. Darkwood, again, I, I don't really get into horror games, but the sound design in this was just so good. Definitely play it with headphones on in the middle of the night, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Ultra, ultra immersive, which is harder for me to come by in games these days. 
Uh, in the last of the good tier, fifth place, we've got Smile for Me, which was totally a surprise. You know, I'm like, oh god, a point and click, and then I booted it up, and I'm like, wow, these characters are actually <laughs> almost people. Almost weird sort of people. And then you can kiss them, which, you know, that's that's really nice. <laughs> that's fun for me. Uh, in the middling tier, in sixth place, we've got Darksiders 3. See what they were going for with the uh, whole Souls-like thing. They kind of jumped on the bandwagon. It didn't work out. That's okay. I don't think that people should be discouraged from trying something new with series. Uh, it just it just didn't work out as well as expected, but that's fine. Uh, Imperator Rome, we've got in seventh place. Again, it just needs a little bit more focus. I know Paradox can do better. If this was the first release from a publisher, I'd be like, hey, great job, guys. But, you know, Paradox is old hat at this by now, and, and they can definitely make something that's better than this. Uh, Chiok is in eighth place. Not a bad game by any means, I suppose, as far as point and clicks go. But I really would like to see the story get a bit deeper and have a bit more of an exploration of the characters and their personalities and stuff. And I think a lot of people out there will enjoy it, put it higher than eighth place. But for me, it, it just didn't do it. Uh, Darksburg is in ninth place. I really did like it overall, but it's just so small and it feels unpolished and... You can squeeze some stuff out of it from character classes and building the character classes in a different way, but overall, I, I think that this game needs a lot more to be packed in, to be packed into it. Uh, if I'm going to compare it to things like Yakuza or Europa, which feel like completely fleshed out games, whereas Darksburg is like kind of feels like a demo, <laughs> five levels and a boss. Gee, thanks. In the bad tier, the stuff that I didn't like, we've got three games. First one is Townsman, which, again, is not a terrible game. I just think that uh, compared to other PC games that I could be playing, why would I ever pick Townsman over them? If I had Townsman on my phone, then, yeah, it's, it's rated as a good game. But in my Steam library, it's probably not going to see much, if any, play. Uh, Little Misfortune, surprisingly, is not the bottom of the barrel. I see what they were trying to do. They're trying to be quirky, and I do understand that some people enjoy that type of humor, but I am just pretty much over it at this point, you know? As a teenager, it would have tickled me pink, but I'm a 32-year-old man now. I need some sense, some pomp and circumstance, you know? <laughs> oh, whatever I'm trying to say. Uh, in, the, in the bottom, if you haven't uh, sussed it out yet, it is Rover Mechanic Simulator. Just not an enjoyable game in any sense, you know? At least Little Misfortune, I'm like, okay, well, they tried this, they tried that, but Rover Mechanic is just, feels like somebody pooped out a game. I'm not sure if it's, you know, that there was not that much thought put into the game, or simply there wasn't that much to do with the game. Like, <laughs> you get it halfway built, and you're like, well, shit, I'm out of ideas. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, but overall, it just, it's not a game that, I would have ever personally picked for myself, and there's a good reason for that. Once I booted it up, I'm like, wow, this is super boring. But some people seem to enjoy, you know, there's there's taste, there's something for everybody, so don't let me turn you off from it if you think that you would enjoy it for yourself. Just boot it up, give it a try, let me know how it goes. But anyways, friends, that's going to be about it from me for this bundle banter, November 2020. It is late, like I said, my computer um, took a poop. It's overheating. I don't understand what the issue is. We've tried to change out multiple parts. Checking the power supply was the first thing because it just powers off instantly. Within within two minutes, it, it powers off. No blue screen of death, nothing like that. So my computer is still uh, completely borked as of the time of this recording. But uh, I've got a laptop which seems to be doing the job decently. Um, takes a little long to render and stuff like that, but... We'll get it up one way or the other, and I guess that's the most important part. If I can't even make one video a month, then I might as well quit YouTube. You know what I mean? And that ain't gonna happen anytime soon. I'll just take long breaks, but I never quit. <laughs> never say die. So I'm gonna get back on the horse. Thanks to everybody who has encouraged me. Uh, subscribers, Discord members, Twitter followers, basically, you know, the helpers, the encouragers that, uh... Help me to stay motivated and keep doing what I'm doing. And the most encouraging people of all are, of course, my Patreon subscribers. So big shout out to Damon Darkstar, Lady Nix, Crimson Albedo, Dot Nathan, Robert Allen, Just Austin, and Barlow's Bugo. 
I definitely appreciate you guys sticking around, being patient. Super sorry for the long delay. Uh, the computer problem should end sometime in December where I will get, you know, Christmas and birthday and <laughs> I know exactly what that is all going towards. So we'll be back soon enough doing the thing like we always do at this time. But I definitely hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll work on October. I can't promise that it will be out uh, this month, maybe next month, you know, super freaking late Humble Choice video. But we got to do what we got to do, you know. Some people are still asking for coverage, even though the choice is technically over, and I'm happy to deliver. So I hope you guys will like, comment, subscribe. Check out the links in the description, Twitter, Discord, and of course, those lovely patrons over on Patreon. This has been another Bundle Banter. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator, and I shall see you in the next one. So until then, friends, bye-bye.